Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. Hello and welcome to this Monday Postcast. I'm Maddie Playle and we've got a busy studio today, full studio, two people. Great to have you both with us, Nick Watts and Dave Orton. And we also have Sam Harley from Paddy Power as well. First off, guys, Breeders' Cup, Dave Orton, how did it treat you? It was going to be car crash until Monomoy Girl won the third last race. Then I got a Nabel in the second leg of the treble and I had Accelerate as well. So the beer was open at that bad point. At all, it that. was terrible up until that point. I talked myself out of expert eye because of the ground. Frankie was brilliant on him, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I needed that badly, but as a spectacle, absolute knockout again, yeah. Okay, yeah, and what's he, any interest in the Breeders' Cup? From yeah, I mean, in, in, from a punting perspective, I was more involved in the daytime at Weatherby. Um, but no, I thoroughly enjoyed the evening. Um, you know, it was an interesting night, wasn't it? Enable, magical, was brilliant. Um, yeah. I thought the classic roaring line was obviously a big downer. Um, never took to the that race. Was a shocker, wasn't it? Yeah. Was yeah. And Sumion's ride, I've been much talked about as well. I think he mm. was generally accepted. He was he was a bit over the top there. So yeah. that wasn't a very edifying spectacle. But yeah. um, on the whole, it was brilliant and and great training performance from. Michael Stout as well. Okay, some more on Sumion in just a bit, but let's start off with Line of Duty, Sam. Um, I think Massar <laughs> ran in this, this race last year, didn't he? Went on to win the derby, but Line of Duty actually managed to win it after a stewards inquiry. How did the market react to uh, him and future targets? Yeah, so we've left Line of Duty unchanged in the guineas at the 16th mark, and we have him in the derby at 20 to 1. Um, just looking ahead to both, it's probably not my idea of the winner at the moment. Um, We've only seen him in maiden company on sort of home turf um, with both his group wins coming in Shanti and then Churchill Downs. Um, so it's quite hard to weigh up the form. I suppose you could make a judgment on the basis of Arthur Kitt being two and a half lengths behind him mm. in fourth. But um, I'd like to see him in a trial next spring before I sort of consider him further. Yeah, you mentioned Arthur Kitt Watsy. I thought he ran an absolutely massive race with the sort of track biases going on. But Line of Duty, it was a nice performance. Yeah, it was. Uh, interesting listening to William Buick afterwards as well. He said the more you get stuck into the horse, the more he responds. So he's obviously very tough and well-bred as well. Dan was Jacqueline Quest, who of course got, yeah, um, yeah. won the guineas and then lost it in the stewards room. Um, as for future targets, yeah, I mean, he's he's got a derby quote and that kind of stuff. But, I, I, you know, I think if too darn hot, uh, would laugh at him at the moment and... I think he's got a fair way to go before you start fancying him for derbies. Um, so he wouldn't be on my radar at the moment. I think they're a very good crop of two-year-olds, and I'm not sure he's at the um, at the very top of them. But well done to him for, for winning at the weekend. Yeah, OK. And Dave, expert eye horse who's been very in and out. You know, as a two-year-old, we thought he was the next big thing. But he was really impressive in the end, the Breeders' Cup mile. Frankie on a brilliant ride, as you mentioned. And the training performance as well. If you remember him at this time last year, they couldn't get him into the stalls. He was sweaty. He was horrible, basically, wasn't he? He now settles a lot better. Yeah, it was an amazing ride, wasn't it? It, it, it seems that only our jockeys worked out that on the turf course you had to come wide to win. I'd be a bit more positive on line of duty. I thought okay. it was definitely a derby winning performance. I loved his attitude. He got murdered, didn't he, in the first a, a couple of furlongs. I thought he did so well to win. OK, and Sam, expert eye, have we got any prices for next year? Queen Anne, perhaps? Yeah, so we, we cut her from 16s to 8s for the Queen Anne. Um, just sort of reiterating what... Dave was saying there about Michael Stout's training performance. Obviously, the Dewhurst and Guineas were both unbelievably disappointing. Um, and you're, you're sort of left thinking he was sort of group three, group two horse at best. But it's good to see him pick up the group one. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, it was, it was sorry, very no. impressive and a very impressive ride by Frankie to judge the pace. And as Michael Stout said, sort of coming down the straight, he was worried he'd left him too far back, but he did well to get up in the end. Yeah, he did. Um, the star of the show, undoubtedly, was Enable. Um, Dave, we'll start off with you. She's just unbelievable, isn't she? I mean, no horse has ever done what she did. She made history. Yeah. Um, perhaps, you know, race and post ratings of saying she's not as impressive as she was last year, but does it really matter when she achieves what she has? Well, it doesn't matter at the moment, does it? A three from three again. It, what I thought was interesting on Saturday, it was the first time we'd ever really had to see her battle, wasn't it? I can't mm. remember at, at, at the last race where she had anything upsides in the final furlong. Even in the arc last year, That's she was true, clear. Yeah. I know that she held off a sea of class late on at Longshot, but the race was won by them, wasn't it? I, if she stays in training, absolutely brilliant, yeah. We are looking yeah. at a 
a potentially top class year next year on the flat, aren't we? Mm. Really strong stuff. Yeah, and I mentioned after the race, Watsy, that we have Khalid Abdullah to thank for keeping the likes of Enable and Frankel in training. So hopefully he'll take heed of that advice and keep her in training for another year. Maybe we're being too greedy, but what was your take out from the race? Well, she was, she was brilliant. She showed another side to her game. As Dave said, that she had to battle. She had, really had to work for it. I mean, Magical really put it up to her and rounding the home turn. Um, you know, you wondered if she was going to get the job done because she has had a difficult season. She has had her injury. Um, she was kind of rushed into the arc a little bit. And there was, you know, obviously a trip to America to take on board. But she dealt with everything. Um, and she got rid of Magical uh, in the final furlong. So to do all this with her probably not being at her best this season is quite incredible. And if she, you know, if she has a good winter and, and, and a good spring where she doesn't suffer any injuries, and, you know, there's no reason why she can't come back next year and win all these, these top races again and show even more than what she showed this season, which is obviously still three from three. So, yeah, amazing. And hats off to all the team for, for taking this bold decision to run her. Yeah. Dave, do you think she could be vulnerable in any way next year? Yes. She's another year older. It depends if they get a smooth run. It's interesting to hear Gosden say in the lead up to it, he wished he had last year's prep, even though she might have been a bit over the top or whatever. He said, you know, the more races are, the better for her. So yeah. we'll expect to see her quite a bit next season, I think. Yeah, I think she loves her racing. You can blatantly see that, can't you? Uh, Sam, what prices have we got on Enable for, for races next year? Yeah, so we've left her 4-1 to one at the top of the market for the ARC, um, with Sia Klatz 6-1. to one. But obviously be amazing to see them take each other on again next year in a rematch um, to see what the outcome would be. Um, I thought the race over in Churchill Downs was probably the best race I've seen this season, um, just from the tactical perspective, even sort of seeing the overhead camera angle of the way Wayne Royden rode um, Hunting Horn, the way he sort of just kept an able boxed in and sort of forced her to go wide and then Magical sort of nipped in on the inside. Um, so they really ran it to test out and able, um, but she answered all the questions. Yeah, she did. Um, we've sort of mentioned Thunder Snow, but I think it's worthy of another mention because it didn't look great, did it, Nick? I mean, I'm not sure if he was breaking any rules over there. He certainly wouldn't have been able to get away with it over here. Where do you stand on, on that? Do you think it, people are making a big deal out of it? or? No, I don't, because I think racing a lot of it's down to perception these days and if we're going to attract and keep the audience all you've got then then you don't really want to be seeing things like that it may have been acceptable in america and within the rules and steve cawthon has come out today and <coughs> said he didn't see much wrong with it but you know i, th I think when the horse is blatantly giving their all as thunder snow was is there any real need to to keep going uh, mm. as sumion did um you know, I think there's just other ways of riding horses these days to try and get the best out of them without necessarily giving them, you know, whack after whack like he did. So, you know, it wasn't pleasant. It wasn't good to look at. Um, it wouldn't have been acceptable over here, but thank goodness we've had the debate here and, you know, some robust debate too. And, you know, if that ever happened over here, I can't see it happening over here ever because of the rules. But if yeah. it did, then, there'd, you know, there'd be some stiff punishment for whoever was concerned. So, you know, yeah. thank goodness it's for not that. not the first time he's caught a controversy with the whip, isn't it? No, and I, I think it's a well, shame so. because he's such a, he is a world-class jockey, but he obviously doesn't really believe in the European rules if he's willing to sort of go outside them, David. What he? was the difference in prize? Was it 200 grand, something like that, the best part of? So, uh, for second and third? So, yeah. Do you was, really think that's what made the difference? I don't know, but it was, it was serious whipping, wasn't it, in that final furlong. I was amazed that he sort of kept on as he did really. Yeah. He goes back to Maidan next year they think to have another crack Yeah. at the Dubai World Cup so that's his Would path. he be top of your list for that again? <sighs> it's difficult to know isn't it what they send really. Um, we'll see maybe Cross Counter might come out there as well. Yeah perhaps uh, and Sam a word from you on, on the whip use of Christophe Simeon didn't look great. Um, where do you stand on it? Yeah so I think the key point is um, the reaction of the horse to the treatment. So yes. obviously over here we sort of we have the rulings in place that there's a limit there and if the horse hasn't reacted positively in that period of whipping that it's not sort of continued and you sort of ease the horse out um, whereas like 18 whips coming down the home straight by Sumion he clearly wasn't reacting to the treatment yeah. and it just sort of it was unnecessary and it was just amazing to see the reaction on Twitter and it's probably good to see the reaction that so many people picked up on it yeah. and were sort of took a ne negative slant on it. And that's from racing fans as well, you know, it's Brendan not from Powell, the outside course, world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, other jockeys as well. I know quite a few people who have come out and said they weren't happy with it. Um, but um, talking about the Dubai World Cup quickly, any prizes on Thunder Snow for that or is it too early? 
Um, I'll just have a quick look for you if you just want to come back to me on no that. No worries, yeah, that's fine. Um, Dave, you know, what do you think of, of our rules in this country? Well, they're probably right, aren't they? I think, I mean, I don't know whether, I don't know, these whips aren't what they used to be, are they? They're light and... Air cushioned. Exactly. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, when Cawthon was riding, yeah, it was the old King's death, wasn't it? So I don't know. I mean, it's all changed since then, isn't it? So I don't know. I thought him coming out was a bit strong, really. But I'm, I'm sort of on the fence a little bit with him, I'm afraid. I'm, I think that certainly when they were counting how many at, at first, it was all a bit of a witch hunt with the yeah. whip, wasn't it? So it's, it's calmed down a bit now. It just seems like it's the right spectacle, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's a balance, isn't it? But what's he, in this day and age, it's something that's going to come under threat quite a lot. As you mentioned, it's, it's perception, isn't it? Yeah, but I think by and large we've got it right over here and I think you can, you know, racing's not losing anything by having these new rules in place, I don't think. You still see some thrilling finishes and you see the jockeys having to use their brains to try and get the best out of their horses. You know, whipping them isn't necessarily the best way of doing that. It, it, it may help, they may respond to it, but there's, there's other ways of getting inside a horse's head and getting them to run for you and, you know, I think it forces jockey to look at, jockeys to look at the whole picture and not necessarily just resort to, uh, resort to the obvious. So I think it's improved jockey ship no end and I think we've got the, the balance broadly right in this country. Um, you know, and we don't witness things like we saw on Saturday. Uh, rarely, if ever, over here now, I would say. Yeah. OK, uh, over to you, Sam. Yep. So we have Thunder Snow <coughs> at the top of the market at 4 to 1. We've Accelerate 5s, McKinsey 10s and 10-fold 14s and it's 20 to 1 bar. Brilliant, as Dave said, a long way off yet. But we'll move on to Weatherby. The good ground meant that Thistle Crack, unfortunately, was out. Bristol Demai didn't run, Nick. But you mentioned earlier that you were keen on it punting-wise. How did it go for you? Yeah, it was good. Um, I, I did back definitely Red uh, because he... It's been shown time and again that he does excel in small fields. Um, I and found when he's fresh as well. Yeah, I, I fancied him to run a big race in the Gold Cup last well, season. I, I thought he's one of these sleepers yeah. who'd come yeah, along at the right time. The ground all winter was absolutely perfect for him. Um, and they put the ground up as an excuse for the Gold Cup run, which I don't buy that at all. I think he just doesn't like being crowded by other horses, and there's 15 okay. in the Gold Cup. He was Cup on the inside year. in the Gold Cup, so if you remember it. But he's really I, unlucky in a Grand National as well, didn't he? He won the Cotswold Chase, right? Yeah, yeah. He won the Cotswold, chase, right? yeah, yeah. Won the Cotswold yeah. chase, but it's yeah. jumping suffered in the Gold Cup, and I'm sure it's because he was being surrounded he, and then he didn't like it. But when he gets on the front end in these kind of small field chases, it suits him ideally. Double Shuffle obviously went at the first, so that helped him. Uh, Black Court and Nilly went a few fences later, sent Bryony into orbit. Great recovery, but his jumping wasn't. Uh, Why did he go off favourite Black Court? I mean, on official ratings, he was he was badly in, wasn't he? That was an amazing recovery, by the way. It was a great yeah. recovery. <laughs> that was and, insane. And to get so close as well, I think she was only uh, Bryony was only beaten a couple of lengths of the yeah, line. Yeah, he was so staying on well in the finish, wasn't he? Kind of fell yeah. into definitely Red's lap a little bit, but um, you know with the small field it, it suited him anyway and if he could get into that relentless rhythm as he does sometimes when he hits the um, home turn in front he's very very hard to get past so yeah as for the future I don't know it's difficult to know where he can be campaigned because I don't think the Grand National would suit him as because of the field size. Well, he's not from two in that now isn't he as well so. Yeah so I think they're going to have to pick their year. way maybe that entry yeah. race that he won last <coughs> season again has a small field. The That's the plan, chase. Think, It'll it? be similar races to that but you know you put him in fields of 10 plus I think he's going to struggle but single figures and he's, he can be devastating. Yeah Dave I'm a big Thistle Crack fan and the ground you know understandably I think it was good to firm, firm yeah. good, good to firm in places in the end. It poses a bit of a problem doesn't it? I mean we're in November now it's hard to believe what's your take on on the that lack summer of rain? drought is still having its say isn't it unfortunately especially around the west country we're going to see Exeter of course this week with the fields so it's terrible aren't they that Alden Gold Cup which we'll get to but we need rain basically we're desperate for it why because otherwise they're not going to run their best horses and we're all going to have this sort of backlog at the end of the season which will be a great spectacle to watch but difficult for punters yeah and it's a safety thing as well isn't it understandably horses like yeah. this are great they've been injured you know you don't want to risk them on that ground uh, Sam any changes in prices for uh, definitely Red after his victory in the Charlie Hall or even Thistlecrack Bristol Demai, are they in the Betfair chase at all? Yes, yeah, so definitely Red wasn't really changed for, for anything. <coughs> um, we had him in the King George at 20 to 1, but the connections identified the Many Clouds chase at Aintree next month as his potential next target. Um, we don't actually have that priced up at the moment. Um, but those that didn't run, we have in the Betfair chase, which is on the 24th of November. So we've Looks an exciting race if everything turns up. So we have Native River and Bristol Demai at the top of the market at five to two. We might buy three to one. Waiting patiently eights, Terra Fort tens, 
Politolog 12s and it's 16 to 1 this will crack and 20 to 1 bar. Yeah, a nice segue into a horse that won uh, recently. Thistlecrack, I think they've mentioned either the Labrooks Trophy or they could go Bet Victor. So lumping weights and handicaps are a possibility. A horse who's favourite for the Bet Victor Gold Cup, Mr Whittaker, uh, won at Carlisle. Really, really nice performance from a really progressive horse. Dave, is he on your radar for the big race at Cheltenham? He has to be, doesn't he? <coughs> the only thing is, what's his mark going to go up to? That's good. He's going to be pretty near yeah. top weight, isn't he? I don't think he's the biggest horse in the world to coin a phrase. But... I loved his jump at the last yesterday, first time up. And having a, you know, a prep run these days in these elaborate trophies and bet victors, I think that's it's a huge thing. Yeah. yeah. It's just whether he's got a bit too much weight, and we know that he loves Cheltenham, of course. Yeah, I think what's well, I think he could really take another step up this season because he's one of those who he travels so well and he idles in front, so he can be a bit deceptive. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he can be deceptive. I actually fancied surname going into the race yesterday, and you know, put up a bold sight in front, but. You know, he was cooked two out. Was it a track for him? Sorry? Stiff finish for him, did that do him? It could have done. It could have, yeah, I didn't might, watch might well have done. Just um, yeah, so he, he weakened in the third, but Mr. Whitaker really, really strong at the line. As you said, we know he likes Cheltenham, um, won a really good addition of that novice handicap yep. there, beat Rather Be, um, who might face him again at Cheltenham in the bet victor. Um, yeah, he will go up in the weights, but you know, if you get a good one in at the top, then then maybe his, his, the weight that he has to carry won't be too bad. Um, and it's yeah, the if like Thistlecrack turns up, like I said, yeah, he wouldn't be too badly. It's the obvious sure. place to go. Well, I mean, I don't know, you, <coughs> you could possibly go for a Peterborough chase, something like that with him, but you know, I, I think I'd rather, if, if he was mine, I'd be going for the bet victor, I think. Yeah, um, I think, you know, step him up to three miles, I don't see why he wouldn't get it. Uh, quickly, before we move on at this stage, have you got a bet victor Gold Cup fancy? Well, I haven't heard anything of him lately. I'll have to wait for David Pike to bring his stable tour out. But King Sox was the name at the start of the season that was on my list. Um, he ran a very good race behind the Storyteller at Cheltenham in March. Had good back form going, you know, back in France back, um, before he came over here. Um, Footpad form, didn't they? That's why everyone thinks he's so well handicapped. Yeah, he's got to go out there and do it now. I mean, he's, you know, he pulled up at Aintree on his on, on his start after Cheltenham, so he's 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 got to, you know, you have to have a bit of. Um, you know, he he hasn't quite done it. It's important that he does it now, otherwise he's going to go on that kind of list, the, the swerve list. So um, the cliff list. The cliff list, yes. Yeah, so, big cliff list. So he's on my radar at the moment, but if he doesn't do it in the Bet Victor, and then you know he can he can soon be scrubbed off. Dave, Bet Victor fancy? Uh, Baron Elko, I like. Ah, uh, Gary Moore, yeah. yeah. Brown Wallet uh, Chepstow, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, and he finished second on his uh, stop before that in the Brown and Mary Bell behind Road to Respect. Of course, he's a proper gold cup horse now, isn't he? So in that league, so I think he's still well handicapped and probably should have won that the last day. He'll go well. Okay, Sam, I fancy on some quick betting on the Bet Victor Gold Cup. Yep. So, Matty, we have Mr. Whitaker at seven to one, the top of the market. We'd rather be Modus and Rene's Girl all at tens. We've Baron Alco twelves, and then we've Full Glass, King Sox, Benatar, Roman de Sanam, Happy Diva, Copan de Class, all at fourteens. Okay, and a fancy from you? So, I think, as Watsu was saying there, Mr. Whitaker's jump at the last was fairly pivotal to his win. Um, Renee's girl hit it, she fa hit it fairly hard um, coming over the last, and that kind of put her out of the race. I think, could she have jumped that more fluently, um, she'd have been a lot closer. Um, I thought she travelled well and went through the race well. Um, and I think there's 14s out there, so I don't think she should be double the price just for hitting the last fence yesterday. Yeah, very true. Uh, we'll preview um, some of the weekend action, but before then, also good jumps action at Ascot on Saturday. When you're ready, Freddie, really impressive winner of the handicap and traffic fluid when the Sodexo Gold Cup. Uh, what's he just a main takeout from you from Ascot? Traffic fluid was, was very impressive in his own way. Um, gave away the advantage at the last. He jumped it very slowly. Art Maresque flew it. Um, so to come back, get past Art Maresk and actually want to shade cosily at the line. I never thought this horse was a real stayer. I mean, he ran in the Clarence House a few years ago behind Under So. Yes. Um, yeah. But he seems to stay better now than, than he ever did. Um, he had a stage where he's in the doldrums a bit, but he's really sort of come out fine. Yeah, that I Cheltenham think. win in, I think it was the April meeting there, he, he kind of sprouted wings, didn't he? came from nowhere to win that day. Staying is obviously his game now, and Gary Moore afterwards mentioned the Grand National. I don't think Gary Moore's ever wow. had a horse fancied for the Grand National, but Traffic Fluid, you could you could definitely give a squeak to. He's got a lot of class. OK, so that's a long-range future fancy. Dave, um, any horses at Ascot take your eye? Were you ready, Freddie? That was his big day in the sun, wasn't it, I think? 
uh, other handicap you left him alone. You wouldn't fancy him going forward. I think the handicap is going to muller him now. He left him alone for that little rocker fellow, which was a rick on his part, I think, and he needs fast ground as well. So, um, it was it Benatar that won that race last year off a much much higher mark? He won a graded chase at the Christmas meeting afterwards, so that could be a target. But he needs to improve like a stone, I think, to figure. Okay, and a quick word we've got to say: G Rod, uh, Graham Rodway, Fidux, a horse that he'd followed for a long, long time. Yeah, he did very well tipping that. Yeah. Yeah, another cliff horse for G-Rod, so uh, well done Tim for picking him out. Um, we'll take a quick break now before we come back and talk about some of the weekend's action. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. OK, welcome back to this Monday postcast. The Holden Gold Cup takes place uh, tomorrow at Exeter. We mentioned a lot of the ground issues in the West Country. A small field, but a good one nevertheless. Um, who are we fancying, Nick, at this stage? Quite like San Benedetto. Um, races like this are his Gold Cup, really, um, and he has to kind of go for them. He's between the rock and hard place and a lot. Of, he's not quite top class. Um, but he can run very well with top class horses. We saw with Altior at Sandown at the end of the season. Um, he's had a run over hurdles. Um, he kind of jumped a bit like a chaser does in that and, and you know, weakened out of it, I think finished sixth, but it would have gotten fit for this. Like I said, I think last year's race was better. It was won by Politolog, who of course went on to do great things. Yep. Um, so for San Benedetto to run him close then was a really good performance. And if you can come back to something like that, I think this race looks a bit easier. I think Bryony Frost is riding. Um, which I think is a plus, gets on very well with the horse. So, uh, yeah, San Benedetto to go on better. Yeah, I quite fancy Ozzy the Oscar in this. Have I nicked your tip? You have. You have full seldom differ, do they? Um, I think he's got to be the favourite, hasn't he, Ozzy the Oscar? He beat San Benedetto. It's late, late, late season, at though, Warwick. Late season. Is San Benedetto just not one of those that kind of always looks like he might have his day and doesn't quite Didn't he win a grade produce? one at Aintree when Politolog fell? Did he grade one winner? He did, there, but he was it? lucky. He was yeah, lucky. he was lucky. Was but it, yeah. It's the Altior run you're pitting your hopes on, basically, isn't it? Well, on the run last year, but on political. He didn't run there very well on his return, though, the, did he? There wasn't, there wasn't much wrong with that, and the Kempton run would have just sharpened him up, I think. Is he? I think there were £5 between him at Warwick, and he's now, what, £4 between or something like that. I think Ozzy Oscar it was a good run at Fosslass. Really good run. Yeah, he ran in that Silver race Street. last year and ran terribly, and then went on to, to, to win. If, if he gets into a rhythm up front, he should take some catching, I think. So I'll take what's he on with that anyway. Okay, and Sam, a final verdict from you. Yeah, so the guys are just finalising the prices, but we have the industry prices um, floating about. So they have Diego de Charmel at 7 to 4, Ozzy the Oscar 5 to 2, God's Own 10 to 3, Sam Benedetto 5s, and Theo 8s. Okay, before um, you go, Sam, I just want to say no love for uh, Diego de Charmel. Entry form, Petit Mouchoir, who probably didn't run his race that day, did he? I suppose he might be in, you know, in danger of thinking he's flattered by that, or I might be anyway. But no, again, he's just not one of these horses I've never been with, really. OK, sorry, Sam, over to you again. Yeah, so I'm in the Aussie the Oscar camp as well. Hi. Thought thought they're running fast last. It was a very good run. He was sort of there going to the last, um, ended up just being beaten three lengths by an improving horse in Silver Streak. Um, Going back to chasing tomorrow, or tomorrow, yeah, I think it's the potential to improve over fences, and he's the one I'm siding with as a potential improver. Yeah, touch wood, he jumps very well. Uh, moving on to the different code now at Doncaster, we have the November handicap uh, on Saturday. What's he? There was scenes in the studio a minute ago when your fancy was declared. Yeah, oh, massive scenes. Yeah, yeah, God, <laughs> couldn't control me. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Eddie Stone Rock um, is the horse I wanted to be declared, and he's in he's in the runners, which is great. He was third in the race last season behind Saunter. It's quite a good renewal of the race, actually. Ran very, very well. Um, and he hasn't shown his best this season, but as a result, I think he's £9 lower than he was last, last year. And signs of a revival. He went to Ireland yesterday um, for their November handicap. Finished really well in about fifth or sixth. Just shows that he might be running into form at the right time. And it's so late in the flat season now that the fact that he's finished third in the race last year um, and the fact that he showed his best form of the season last time out <coughs> suggests um, he's coming to the boil. He'll need to because obviously the season's over very soon. But um, yeah, it's the right time of year for him. Quite a strong fancy, I sense, from uh, Mr Watts. Dave Orton, have you got a strong fancy? Uh, if there's rain around, uh, the ground at the moment up there is good to firm, believe it or not. Uh, there are showers, I think, in the area. So if it's okay. soft, then Reshoon, I think, uh, for last year's Owen uh, Connections. 
Came back to form over a mile six last time at Haydock in terrible ground. That would be a slight question mark. And Billy Ray is quite an interesting one. Yeah, uh, for Mick Shannon, Mick who's Shannon. having winners all over the place, isn't he? Um, if he gets in, uh, that red car win, I really liked it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, Sam, over to you. Yeah, so I'm with Watsi again there with Eddie Stone Rock. Um, I was actually at Nace yesterday and thought he ran a brilliant race. He sort of fell out of the stalls fairly slowly um, and then just finished really well. Um, he got a gap sort of in the last furlong and finished well. Um, he's 10 pounds lower than when he was third in it this time last year. So he has been on a decline throughout the year, but it was good to see him sort of come back into form yesterday. And if he turns up, I think he has a great shout. Yeah, it was a really nice run and we're all over the place on the postcast today. We're going to go back over jumps and over to win Canton for the 335 Badger Ales Trophy. Always the sign that the jumps is really coming back into view. Paul Nichols, great record in this race, won it with Present Man last year, who I believe is due to go again. What's he any love for Present Man? Yeah, I think so. I mean, this is the meeting, isn't it? The tri uh, Nich Nichols traditionally farms. Um, he reminds us all of what a great trainer he is. and. Um, he doesn't just win the Badger Rails, he wins most most races on this card on the Saturday. But yeah, present man um, really toughed it out last th this time last year. It was when... Uh, Brought Brian into the spotlight, didn't he? It did really, yeah. This was the race that kind of really propelled it. It was a very, very tight finish and she showed, um, you know, great horsemanship to get, to get him home. And it's funny, I, I thought the Bryony Frost story might kind of taper off a little bit this season because yeah. of what she did last season, how fantastic it was. But you look at it, she's won on Froden at um, Aintree a few weeks ago. She's brilliant on Black Courton. She did great on Old Guard to get him anywhere near winning on Saturday. So she's riding just as confidently as well as ever. Um, so if she's on present man uh, this weekend, again, it'd be a plus for me and wouldn't put it past the horse and her to, to win two in a row. Yeah, I think uh, in jumps racing, it's great that we have you know, big personalities in the game. And Bryony, she always seems to be so well with the public. You know, everyone wants her to do well. She gives everyone so much time and she's so brilliant in interviews. It's a testament to her character, isn't it, Dave? Breath of fresh air, I think, is, you know, that sums her up absolutely perfectly. Yeah, she's just happy-go-lucky and she's a bit of a nutter, I think, isn't she? That, <laughs> that probably helps. <laughs> I, think she'd, I think she'd be okay with us saying that, wouldn't yeah, she? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think so. But, uh, uh, this present man, he's only had uh, 12 starts over fences. He's won five times. He's still only an eight-year-old. He was bought to, to, uh, to win the race last year. Nichols has got El Bandit in there as well, who, who we haven't seen for a long, long time, but I think they reckon uh, that that's well handicapped. They'd be the two that I was looking at at this stage. Okay, Sam, over to you finally. Yeah, as Dave mentioned there, probably depends which one um, Paul Nichols runs or what looks like his first choice in the race. Um, I like the look of El Bandit um, when he won a novice chase at the end of last season in Warwick. Um, he won it in impressive fashion. It was a small field. I think there was only three runners that day. Um, but I think, yeah, Paul Nichols identified him in his stable review the other day. Um, he sort of mentioned this as the target with the hope to get a prep run into him so maybe the ground's um, a concern for him um, but we'll see it probably depends what turns up here but I'd probably side with El Bandit if he's first choice. That's it for the previews after this quick break we'll be having a look at the Melbourne Cup. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. We're now going to look at the Melbourne Cup. We've got Nick Watts, Dave Orton and Lydia Simmons from ANZ Bloodstock here to preview the race. We've got plenty of British interest in this race. I think it's going to be coming home to the Brits. A British horse never won it before. Nick, uh, Irish winner last year in rekindling. First off, who's your fancy? Um, I've always liked cross counter for the race. Uh, I've been pretty consistent about that. I think he's the right type. Um, a bit stymied by the draw potentially. Could have been better, but... You know, good form coming into the race, and I think the thing about the Melbourne Cup is you don't want an out-and-out stay. You want a horse that's is good over a mile and a half and can can stretch it out to two miles. Um, Cross Counter strikes me as being that kind of horse. Won the Gordon Stakes, ran really well in Great Voltage, um, and Form Frank there from Kew Gardens, who was just in behind him. Um, I think he's got a lot going for him. Godolphin have come very close to winning this race before on several occasions, and they might have the right type this time to to get over the line. Yeah, Lydia, you're our Australian racing expert. I think the, the sort of vibes are that Young Star's the best home hope. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think um, her run in the Caulfield Cup was, I think you can kind of scratch that because it, it just really wasn't a very strongly run race. It was glacial pace. Um, Chris Wallace seems pretty pretty keyed on her. Um, another one that ran in the Caulfield Cup that I actually don't, I think will run, should run well, um, is Ace High. Um, he won the Derby last year. 
Um, again, he, di- he did not like the way the Caulfield Cup was run. Um, also, it was soft ground, which it wouldn't have suited him that well. And he loves Flemington. I, I think, I do think he, if he gets the right run, he could do well. Obviously, he's going to jump from barrier 22, which isn't ideal. But if he can get a good, if he can run those first five furlongs and get on the in the right place on the bend, I think he can he, he can feature in the in the end. Yeah, um, you mentioned the draw there. Uh, from your perspective, what are the things you look out for? As Nick said, do you look out for a horse who's done well over shorter trips? Do they need yeah, to be drawn think... in a specific place, ground? Um, ace high, I suppose, is a good one. I mean, I think the draw, I think you can get hung up on the draw a bit with the, with the Melbourne Cup because I know, yeah, it, you don't want to be drawn in the car park, obviously. But I think if you can if you can get a good place once you get to the bend, it's five furlongs before you even reach the, the first bend. Mm-hmm. And they do go very, very quick. And then they suddenly like kind of pull back a bit. Um, I think you can get hung up on the draw. Obviously, 24 is not an ideal draw if you are in 24. And that has kind of put me off Yucatan. The 20, 23 is, is a massive question mark for me. Yeah, I was going to say we have to give Yucatan a mention. Won the Herbert Power so impressively. Were you yeah. expecting that from him? No, I, I actually, we do a column with Peter Moody and ANZ every week. And he said that for him, that is one of the, probably the best performances coming into a Melbourne Cup, which is, which is quite, and I think it shows they didn't run him in the Cox Plate. They, they, they thought they might follow him up in that, but I think they just thought that was a perfect run. He's in good form, good break now, and then send him to the Melbourne Cup. I, I do 23. I know I've said the barriers, you can get hung up on the barriers, but 23, it, it, it'll be a task, but I think he's got the class and he's got an unbelievable jockey on board in James McDonald. Yeah. Um, Dave, I'll go to you before going back to Lydia. Maybe we can talk about some of the local jockeys and their strengths, but who's your fancy? Well, James McDonald's on Yucatan, isn't he? And in the Herbert yeah. Power, he was drawn wide as well. I mean, James McDonald is top five rider, no doubt. Yeah. He's absolutely brilliant. But can we trust Yucatan? Mm. I remember him running at Royal Ascot. He, he didn't look very keen, yeah. did he? Last in the coronation. At cup. all. Yeah, I think it's probably coming home as well. Um, I think the cross counter should be favourite, probably. If he had a better draw, he'd be, he'd be easily favourite, I think. Um, and t- t- Appleby, it's a matter of time before they win this again, isn't it? Uh, Kevin McAvoy's twice won the race before, I think, so no problems there. I think it'll be fine. I've got a sneaky one of the home team um, Red Cardinal who's now trained by Darren Weir. He used to be trained by Dave Simcock over here, you remember. Then he went to Andres Verla, and that was bought by the firm that liked to sort of target these races. He was totally drawn out of it last year. He's been quietly prepped for this, and Darren Weir's a genius. And I think that from a much better draw, around about 50 to 1, he's huge. Yeah, talking about the draw, um, Corville Cup winner, best solution. He managed to come from quite out wide, Lydia. And then we've got some other of the Brits that have been winning over there. A Prince of Aaron won the Lexus Stakes as well. We've got Muntaha coming over Magic Circle as well. Who would be, you know, your sort of second choice of the home team? Uh, Muntaha, I, he just, I think you've got to watch. He's so quirky. Again, I just, I think you've got to watch the prelims with him. If he takes them all well and he deals with the because it is the 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 thing about the Melbourne Cup is it's such a spectacle and there are so many people there and it just there are so many horses in the paddock at the time there's 24 of them that it's huge I think if he takes that in his stride and you know loads into the barrier fine I think I think he has the class to win it and he's so classy he started favorite for the ledger until he ran off and uh, you know just had a bit of a mare there and obviously at your um he completely in the ball came home in front but mm. I think he is a quirky one um whether he wins I don't know if, if he won it wouldn't surprise me at all um I can he win with such a long break it's been a long time since he last had his last run and you know rekindling did it for the first time I think since 1993 to not have a lead-up run last year but I, I do think for me I a lead-up a lead-up run is quite important OK, Lydia, and a word on Avilius, another good Godolphin runner. He, I actually really like him. I think his run in the Cox Plate was unbelievable. He was really coming on at the end. The only question mark I have on him was in the Bart Cummings. He looked to be all stops out at that run. And the one that came second to him, is it Jarme, the Shadwell horse, then didn't win. They thought he was going to win, obviously, the Lexus to then get into the Melbourne Cup. And he got beaten by a Prince of Aaron. So um, I think he's drawn really nicely. He's a good horse. James Cummings seems to like him a lot. Um, I think he's 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 probably the top of the list for me for the home 
for the home crowd um, of like the more fancied of the runners, I think. Okay, brilliant. Um, and another British horseshoe we've not really spoke about much yet is Magic Circle. What's the... Um I quite like to see him win just to see what happens with Marwan Kukash, oh, to be you honest. Don't, you don't want to see Marwan Kukash in a thong, <laughs> no. surely. Well, oh. I think it's a funny it's a funny story. I interviewed him before he went out and, you know, things like that are good for the sport anyway, aren't they? They get everyone, you know, get everyone talking, a bit controversial. But, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whether he actually goes through it or not, I, I, I don't know. Hopefully he'll forget all about it and if, if, he, <laughs> if he does, if, if the horse does win. And he can win, you know, he was great in the Chester Cup earlier in the year, wasn't he? I'd, I was on him that day, and he, you, you don't often see Chester Cups won like that. They're normally very competitive, hard fought, but he won out easily yeah. and showed what a good horse he was at Sandown again next time. So he's certainly not out of it. Um, just going back to Yucatan briefly, um, he, he is an odd horse because he was completely out of form in the summer, come back to form. The Prince of Aaron has franked his form uh, by winning at the weekend. But if you just go back through Yucatan's form to the beginning of last season, ran in the Bally Sacks and was beaten a length by a horse called Rekindling. So if you go back there far enough and if he's back to that kind of level now, he is, despite his draw, he is, he is a big player. Yeah, and Dave, just a word on Magic Circle. Ian Williams, he's such an underrated trainer with yeah. dual purpose horses. And what he's done with this horse really sort of showcases how good he is. They he? strongly fancy him as well, don't they? He's not got the best of draw. Is he too slow? That would be my worry. I know that sounds a bit weird, but he's a proper stayer, isn't he? So I think okay. he's going to need them to go properly hell for leather. They do tend to slow up in this race about a mile out and then they flash home again. And you can see horses getting going all too late. I've got a feeling he might just be one of them. But yeah, um, from a story point of view, it would be top notch. OK, so just to wrap up a final selection from each of you, Dave Orton. Red Cardinal to blow it out of the park. Nick uh, Watts. Cross counter. And Lydia Simmons. My heart says Prince of Aaron, but my head says Avilius. OK, well, best of luck for your selections uh, tomorrow morning. The race that stops a nation, it would be fascinating to find out who's the winner. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. OK, thanks to Lydia for joining us for that Melbourne Cup preview. Sam, what are the prices on the Melbourne Cup and uh, who's your fancy? Yes, yeah, so it's going to be an early morning, Maddy. Um, we've Yucatan at 11 to 2 at the top of the market. We've Cross Counter 6s, Magic Circle 13 to 2, Muntaha 15 to 2, Best Solution 10s, Avilius 11s, Marmelo 12s, and the Cliffs of Moher and Young Star both at 14s. Brilliant, thanks. And your selection? So I was looking at the form from last year. I sort of I've picked out Marmelo of Huey Marsons, um, the five year old by Duke of Marmalade. He ran in the race last year and finished ninth. Um, he just looked like he didn't give us true running um, and that he'd had a long season. Um, he had a prep race over in Australia last year and came second um, in the lead up. And he was actually put in at favourite last year at six to one in the market. Um, he's come fresh this year straight from Europe after a second in a group two at Deauville. Um, Huey Bowman's been riding him work over there and has actually elected to ride him again this year. And I presume he had quite a few options, so it's quite telling that he sided with Marmelo again this year. Um, I think it's a weak re renewal this year, and he's drawn well. So I think with 14 to 1 available, with sort of 6 and 7 places in the market, he'd be my each way play. OK, Marmelo for Sam. Now, before I get your um, midweek naps, we'll get a horse from each of you for your RP tracker. I'll kick us off. I really like the run of Gary Moore's Larry in the Novices Handicap Chase at Ascot. I think he did well as a hurdler, but he looks well handicapped, and I think he can build on that run. I think he finished third or fourth in the end, so he's my horse. What's he? Yeah, it was a good uh, novice hurdle at Carlisle yesterday, won by Nigel Twist and Davies' horse, won for Rosie, won very impressively, but there's a horse in third there of Sue Smith's called Hill 16, who won an Irish point, was bought for big money by Trevor Hemmings, was making its um, hurdling debut over here in that race, travelled really, really strongly. Couldn't cope with the twist in Davis horse um, on the run to the line, but still ran with huge promise. Um, I think it'll stay very well. I think it'll win a few nice hurdles this season. So Hill 16 for me. Yeah, you like your Trevor Hemmings horse at the minute, don't you? <laughs> yeah, the last week's one just lost by a short head, so I don't like oh. them that much. But um, yeah, no, this one, yeah, definitely wants to All about profit with you, Watson, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what else? Uh, Dave, who's your RP tracker horse? Wanderleish, who ran third in the November handicap uh, race at the Nick and Sam uh, were mentioning. He absolutely flew on uh, from off the pace. There's more to come from him over hurdles. So Charles Burns will have a plan. Brilliant. Uh, Sam? Yeah, so I have two. So just in the mild two-year-old race yesterday at Nace, a horse called Hazran for Mick Halford. 
Um, he ran into third, sort of having found plenty of trouble in running. And just sort of when the penny dropped, um, it was on his debut, so when the penny dropped, he just flew home. Um, he's got a, he holds an English Derby entry for next year. So I think he could be fairly smart over middle distances. And I'd encourage anyone to go back and watch that race. And then just one of Gordon Elliott's who won the bumper in Down Royal, or it's called Malone Road. Yeah, was unbelievably was impressive. impressive. Yeah. Um, I think it, it's great to see Shively Park sort of switching across to the jump scene as well. Um, I think they've around 10 with Gordon this year. Um, so he's actually, we cut him from 25s into 16s for the champion bumper at Cheltenham. Um, so he's definitely one to keep an eye on when he steps up into sort of lifted class. Okay, brilliant. Now let's get your midweek naps cue, Steve Palmer. This will not be beaten. Again, I'm going to kick us off. I'm going to go for Ms. Pathwife. She runs in the 205 at Market Races on Thursday. It's a listed mare's chase. I love this mare. I think she can go on and run really well in the Labrooks Trophy. So hoping for a winning return to action from her. Nicholas. Yeah, Newbury on Thursday. Uh, wait for me if Philip Hobbs goes or might go in the per temps qualifier. Um, didn't run particularly well at Cheltenham last time, but I just don't think that's his track. His form there has got progressively worse. He's never won at Cheltenham in his life. He does run well at Newbury. He's got good for, uh, form figures there. He actually went off 10 to 11 uh, a few years ago to beat Bouvier there in a novice hurdle there. And not surprisingly, he came off second best. But um, he's been, you know, highly touted at various stages of his career. It's never quite taken off. But I think staying trips will be the making of him. I think a flat track like Newbury suits. So if he goes there on Thursday, wait for me. Dave? I toyed with Miss Parfire as well, actually, in that race. Yeah, I'm she's really, mine. <laughs> really looking forward to her coming back. Yeah, I think she's everyone's, isn't she? She's a hugely likeable mare, isn't she? Yeah. She should probably just about win that. I'll give you one on the flat. Uh, 2.15 Nottingham Wednesday, the Lady Cecil Handicap, a burn up uh, the straight there. Kick on, kick on for Clive Cox. Probably should have won at Leicester last time. OK, and Sam, finally. And I'm just going to keep it simple with Ozzy the Oscar in the Haldon Gold Cup tomorrow at Ex Exeter. Nice and simple, that's what we like. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. If you enjoy these shows, make sure you rate, review and subscribe wherever you're listening to us. Don't forget to listen to our Golf Postcast every Wednesday where Steve Palmer is picking out some cracking winners at the moment, as ever. And our football tipping shows every Thursday as well. Bruce will be back on Friday with the rest of the team to look ahead to the action in more detail. Until next time, goodbye. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com.